A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to work, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. The truth that I have come to learn and embrace since shedding the corporate yoke. Out here, we survive by the sheer strength of our spirit. We have no need for the endless rules and red tape of a corporate structure. We do seem to burn through endless ammunition and medical tape, though. Yes, well, such is life. Our descendants will enjoy safety and luxury, but our generation is the foundation on which that future is built. Now, why have you come? The Iconoclasts are free folk. We live under our rules, motivated by our own beliefs, all petals on the same flower of enlightenment. Meanwhile, the board strangles the will of its workers. It is the penultimate exercise of a poisoned society where people are enslaved by a corporate ladder. We seek to replace their way of life with ours. Philosophism is the key to unlocking their shackles. Oh, yes. Gunships hover in our skies, ready for the day they decide to come to our doors waving banners of war. The perception of visionaries is often tainted by the lies of their oppressors. A sad state of affairs, to be sure. All right. Awakening is available to all whose minds are ready to accept it. What would you like to know? I would like to know what you think Bokonu meant when he wrote, your work is to discover the truth, and then with all your heart, give yourself to it. Ah, how refreshing to have a scholar among us. Bokonu's text simply refers to our entire purpose, assisting the universe in realizing its own truth. Let it guide us as it will. It refers to giving oneself over to the plan. It is not some peon to an invisible creator in the sky. Were there a truth to the grand plan in the first place, I and Bakonu might agree. But what we see as divine purpose is just one facet of the universe figuring itself out. To quote, as a child looking at the leg of an elephant, unable to view it whole, we mistake the tiny scope of our understanding as the unfathomably large purpose of the universe. You're not completely full of shit, I'll give you that even if you do twist things beyond recognition to suit your own beliefs. Were my teachings beyond recognition, I dare say I wouldn't have a small army of followers who understand and believe. I owe you an apology. I expected you to be a complete idiot. I'd say you're actually more in the 25% idiocy range. Likewise. Now, I'm sorry. What was it you were asking? Ah, the Eternal. We are all part of the consciousness of the cosmos. Each of us plays a tiny role in the universe's continual journey toward understanding itself. You and I, and the rats and the mantis swarms. Divinity is in us all, and the Eternal is that divinity. Everyone, regardless of ability to believe, is another facet of the universe contemplating its own existence. Ability to believe? I think you mean inability to tell fantasy from truth, which rules out any knowledgeable scientician. Let us be clear. Neither of us can lay claim to being knowledgeable on this topic. It is a matter of belief. It is not as if OSI has gone and proven anything. Regardless, what were you saying? The point of no return. When your mind fully opens to the eternal truth, every philosophist experiences it along the path to enlightenment. For many, it is the first brush with the cold of death 
when they realize that all of their lives have boiled down into the single truth of that moment. Mine was witnessing my friend and colleague transform into the very evil we sought to combat. Now he runs MSI, just like the overlords before him. I suppose that's one way to look at it. Another is that misfortune often brings opportunity. I found my path through the tragedies of my past. Not in the sense of a single entity, fashioning the universe as a whittler fashions a flute. The universe came into being over time, organically, naturally, and without purpose. In that sense, I suppose you could say that, in the interest of finding its purpose, the universe itself created all living things. The universe doesn't need to find its purpose. It is a mathematically perfect equation that gives mankind purpose. That we'd consider ourselves in any way capable of understanding the universe, much less an equation that drives it, is nothing but hubris. All right. I'm sorry. As long as it's been, I'd still rather not speak of it. That was a painful day for us all. All people are part of the Philosophist family. I've come to accept that, along with the additional weight of their deaths. Why have you come? All right. Why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. Oh, yes. Many facilities lie abandoned in the wilderness. I believe the press could be operational again with a little elbow grease and luck. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... <sighs> Forget it. Huxley's still recovering. She won't be up for a run for a while yet. It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. So you're her mysterious savior. She sings your praises. That girl and her songs, so eager to learn, so bright-eyed, so... tone-deaf. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage. Hey. Ah, <sighs> the cool evening air refreshes my spirit and brings only the faintest hint of sulfur. I've been mulling over everything with Graham and the Iconoclasts. Upon further reflection, Graham's not as much of an idiot as I thought he'd be. But in other ways, he's worse. I'd urge you to be careful in future dealings with him, Captain. 
He's an unhinged zealot who lacks awareness of the consequences of his choices. I wouldn't trust him to lead a crew, let alone a town-wide cult. As much as I usually appreciate the board's ordered approach to governance, in Monarch's case, they aren't really running anything so much as leaving everyone to rot. Unless you agree with them that the inhabitants of Monarch should be forced to evacuate, or die from their stubborn rebelliousness. Zora is militant, unbending, and ruthless for sure. I'd be hesitant to oppose her. But she gets results, and she doesn't suppress intelligent discourse. Can't say I agree with the Iconoclasts, but Zora has what it takes to save Monarch.